<laughs> so as you probably heard at IO 2017, Google officially released the Google Assistant for iPhone. And today, I'm excited to announce that the Google Assistant is now available on the iPhone. So no matter what smartphone you use, you can now get help from the same smart assistant throughout the day, at home and on the go. Now I've been a huge fan of virtual assistants since way back in 2011 when Siri was initially released, but it wasn't until early 2014 when I got my first iPhone that I actually got to use it. Fast forward three years and the iPhone can not only run Siri, but also Amazon's Alexa, Cortana, and of course Google Assistant. Jumping right in the main screen, you'll see it's more or less like a string of messages at any time you can scroll back up to see your previous searches and you can interact with the results. At the bottom there's a microphone and you can tap that whenever you're ready to start speaking or just like before you can say OK Google and it will begin listening. Next to that you'll see a little keyboard icon and this is new to the Google Assistant in general and something I really appreciate. With most assistants, if you're in public or just don't want to talk for whatever reason, you're flat out of luck, but with Google Assistant you can type just like you would to another person and it will give you the same response it would by voice. Except obviously it won't talk back to you because it assumes there's a reason you're not speaking. Jumping up to the top you'll see there's a button that lets you access the menus. Now the explore tab is a great place to start if you're looking for things the assistant can help you with. So there's all sorts of different categories and something you might notice is all of these services built in. Now these aren't things you'll have to download, they're all built right in, although some of them you may have to sign into. Now the assistant treats these all kind of like their own people and that's help you with more specific tasks. So for example, you can say something like, let me talk to Genius, and it will give you access to all of those commands that that specific developer has built in. So it's fairly limited right now, but as you can hopefully imagine, it opens up a whole world for developers to expand upon the capabilities of the assistant. Next is your stuff, and this basically gives you a list of all your reminders, events, and stuff like that. Finally, we have the famous three dots up in the corner, and of course that will reveal more options. And we have the basic stuff you'd expect to see, but we also have settings hidden in here. So now in here you can make various adjustments to your account, including adding payment information. Now you might be saying, why would I want Google to have my credit card information, but there's actually a fairly good reason. As Google showed off at its keynote, in the future you'll be able to complete entire transactions within the Google Assistant. Now their example was Panera Bread, but you can already order pizzas through Domino's on the Google Home, and I can see this expanding to all sorts of other things like online shopping. Moving right down, there's services, and here there's a lot of very fine adjustments for you to make. First, you can connect your smart home devices if you do indeed have some. Below that, there's news, and you can choose which sources it pulls from. Next is my day, and this is actually really cool. So basically, you can adjust what information Google gives you when you say something like, how's my day looking? Then there's shopping lists, so if you ask Google to add things to your shopping list, this is where you can find the full list. And then last, but certainly not least, is shortcuts. Now this is something like typing that I think every single assistant should have. Basically you can set it up so you can say one thing and it does a different thing. And there's a few really great reasons for this. First, if a particular command is just way too long and you want to shorten it up, you can feel free to do that. Or if you find yourself having to phrase things in a very specific way, you can change to exactly how you'd like to say it. And really there's just all sorts of reasons why this is a really good thing to have. Now obviously I can't list all of the things Google Assistant can do, but you do have all the things you've come to expect, like math problems, figuring out the height of celebrities, and finding out where the nearest gas station is. But there's a couple things that set the Assistant apart, in my opinion. You can actually expect to get results when you ask it a question. Very rarely does it ever just say, here's what my web search turned up. And that's because it doesn't just pull from a very specific set of websites. If you ask it a food-related question, it will check a food-related website, not just Wikipedia. And if you ask a medical-related question, it'll check a website that specializes in that. I think you get my point. And if it does end up just giving you a link, more often than not, it's the website that will answer your question. It doesn't just take exactly what you said and Bing search it. And that's not even mentioning how genuinely entertaining the Google Assistant is. And it's not just telling jokes or answering funny questions, there's actually full games built into the Google Assistant. Everything from Magic 8-Ball to guess that movie title and a really hilarious game show that you can play with multiple people. What are anti-pasty? Fluffed rice. Pasta shapes. Or appetizers. Appetizers? I like that answer, because it's right. So it's no secret that Siri is in desperate need of an update if Apple wants it to keep pace, and Google Assistant can even perform certain basic phone tasks like making phone calls, interacting with Apple Music, or sending texts. But obviously there's certain things it's just not going to have access to, like turning off and on Wi-Fi, controlling brightness, etc, etc. And although the widget is a really nice touch, it's never going to truly replace a hands-free experience like you get with Siri. So the key is going to be figuring out when to use each of them. Obviously, for getting directions and sending text, Siri is going to be the way to go. But for most things outside of basic system tasks, Google Assistant is going to provide you with much more information and do it in a much more natural-feeling manner. 
One thing's for sure though, I'm really excited to see how these continue to improve in the coming years. I'd give it a 5 out of 5, my only real complaint is that it's not built into the existing Google search app, and that's really just a petty complaint, isn't it? So today's question of the day is, do you use virtual assistants on a regular basis? Let me know by tapping the I, and if you have any questions, suggestions, or would just like to start a conversation, feel free to drop a comment down below. I post new videos every single Sunday, so i definitely like to see you back next week, but until then, 